Hello, it's Scott Manley here, about to catch a flight in a few hours, and uh, so do these guys. As you can see in the distance, at 67 kilometers, their uh, parent ship is orbiting towards them, and so it is time for them to take their positions around this, um, well, I guess it's like a flying pillbox or something. Oh, yep, um, okay, I'll try that again. <laughs> you know, it's low enough gravity, I think you can afford some RCS here. Uh, yeah, no, you can't change direction in midair, that would uh, violate the laws of physics. It's amazing how much uh, Mario has uh, taught people that is incorrect. There we have one. And all the time this thing is getting closer, I hope we're going to get up into the air, or up into the skies, at least before it passes us by. It will not wait. The laws of physics are pulling it inexorably around this planet, or this moon, at a speed of 550 meters per second. And we are going to have to get on board and haul ass if we want to catch it. We want to get as close as possible. Okay, we are ready to go. Um, there it is, 32 kilometers out. That's pretty good. <coughs> and so let us fire this up. Go! Ah, oh, beautiful liftoff. Isn't it amazing how controllable having something made out of RCS system is? It's almost like it's made of control. Ah, yeah, so you see we've already, uh, it's already come in 10 kilometers. We're only traveling at 50, oh, wait a second. Uh, I should be clicking on the, shouldn't be clicking on things. Oh dear, wasting time. At least I'm not going to crash. So uh, accelerate, so we've got to get up to 550 meters per second in about 10 kilometers, that is the orbit we are in. Most important thing is to basically get up to orbital velocity. Once there, we can take our time at our leisure to intercept the vehicle in question. And uh, if we run out of fuel in this, we still have the EVA packs. We'll see if I can get all the way in nicely. And then, yeah, if there's any fuel left over, we should be good citizens and dump the remaining stage back on the moon so that it isn't floating around to crash into some other um, unwittingly un <laughs> innocent spacecraft. After all, I have a lot of things floating in moon orbit right now. I shall fix that one of these days. Actually, I have fixed most of that off camera. You just don't want to see yet another mission where I'm scooping you know, stranded astronauts. I just want you to show to see this one, you know, where I'm basically flying this spaceship that's made up entirely RCS with um, the astronauts hanging on to the side for dear life. It actually looks like a pretty comfortable ride. I'm sure if we could see their faces, they would be smiling. Maybe, maybe I should combine this with a camera mod and have the camera facing directly at their faces. You know, I was thinking that uh, if we get limited air supply on the EVA suits, we should have the, the carbonauts turning from green to blue as the oxygen runs out. Okay, so we're up to 450 meters per second. We are almost at orbital velocity. Just going to keep going. <coughs> we're at, what are, our altitude's just under five kilometers, so we probably, well, we want to figure out whether we're ahead or behind that and the spacecraft we're going for, and then adjust our orbit. Oh, hell, you know, if we're close enough, we'll probably just make some direct burns. If, if the whole higher and lower orbit thing is mainly if you want to, um, if you want to catch up with something slowly, you know, and using the least minimum amount of fuel, but we have loads of fuel. It's like the whole spacecraft is made of fuel tanks. Go figure, huh? Okay, so I'm just, you see my Apple apps popped up a little high because I accelerated too much, but that's okay because I anticipated I'm past them. So what I'm doing is I'm firing downwards so that my vertical velocity is neutralized, and then I will adjust my orbit to make it circular. So again, wasting fuel here, but you know, we have a lot of fuel left right now. I dare say we will not be wanting for fuel during this mission, and we will be simply uh, wanting for control, because it is not the easiest thing to fly, but actually, it's not the hardest thing to fly. There we are, eight kilometers out, uh, a few, I guess that would be about five kilometers ahead of us, and a little about that above us, so we'll get up, well, you know, we're, all, we're also in a slightly inclined orbit, so we should probably fix that as well. Fix the orbital inclination before we fix anything else. But uh, accelerate forwards, we'll go into a, a faster orbit, 
And then, yeah, you can see that we're off to one side. So I'm just doing this in time acceleration mode now because otherwise the video would be ridiculously long. And since I do have to catch a flight in uh, just under four hours, I don't want this to be the last thing I do and I, I forget things in my bag. Um, so now coming across, oh, look, there's somebody on the ground there. We should wave to him. I wonder who that is. It's probably just some debris. But as you've seen, most of the debris that I've, I've had recently has been debris that I can fly. Um, there we go. We're now two and a half kilometers. I mean, at this point, we really could just EVA it across and, you know, forget about it. Oh, there we go. One kilometer. So I'm just going to spend a lot of effort just trying to get this all lined up as close as possible. And uh, I said, at this point, I should just EVA it, but I think... I tr I'm trying 170 meters. Oh, I'm so close. Look. Oh, no, overshooting it again. You'll notice that uh, although I could uh, use the RCS to translate in all directions, there is a danger that if I thrust the wrong direction for too long, then the astronauts would fall off and then I'd have to go and rescue them. And, you know, that would be embarrassing. So I'm just like spinning around here doing a terrible job trying to keep close to this thing. Uh, I don't think I'm doing a particularly good job. Okay, so let's just uh, EVA over there, you know. Spacecraft be damned. EVA is a whole lot easier. So let's uh, start approaching this. I don't know which one they, it is I'm flying. I can't see his name anywhere on the screen, but um, doesn't matter. We've switched this back to real time. He's like 300 meters out, and this should be an easy journey for this guy. Of course, uh, we are approaching this at but a few meters per second, and it's always... You know, f great thing to remember that while you may be approaching this target at a few meters per second, you are in fact flying across the surface at several hundred meters per second. Which, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys in America know meters per second or even, hey, kilometers per second. Um, uh, you know, uh, about uh, 2,000 meters, oh, about one meters per second is about three, two and a half miles an hour. So, uh, and, or 3.6 kilometers per hour. So there you go. So 500 meters per second is about one and a half times the speed of science. There we go. Um, okay, now where is, where's the, where's the hatch, damn it? Oh, look, so we started out 300 meters from this thing, but now the RCS stack is just receding away from it. It's now 700, 800 meters away. I am terrible. It, uh, each one in turn is going to have to travel further and further. It's going to be a problem. Where is, where is the, the hatch, damn it? Is this thing rotating while I'm flying around it? It's not like there's somebody on board that's deliberately trying to make it hard. This is just the physics engine, you know, being a bastard to me. It doesn't like me, the physics engine. I think Unity doesn't like me because I, I diss on its really simple first order equation solver as opposed to, you know, a proper higher order solver that would actually not produce as many bugs, but be harder to code. There we go. We have our ladder. Just get in. And we will have rescued, well, not so much rescued, because this is part of the mission. One of the curbs will, will, have, will successfully return, assuming we have enough fuel. Okay, so yeah, we're now a kilometer away. Well, again, that should not be a problem for this EVA suit. Let's just see if we can do it a little more quickly. 1,088 meters. Um, so let's, uh, oh, what am I doing? What did I switch? Uh, there he is, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah, we're just going to approach this at speed. I'm going to try and, his name is Calmly, and uh, he is calmly accelerating up to uh, quite a fast approach speed because it's space, and there is nothing else to hit but this um, other spacecraft. And if you hit that other spacecraft, you'd have to be a really terrible pilot. The odds of crashing into that other spacecraft are so vastly remote that you would have to be a complete moron to hit it. And so that's okay. That's why I feel completely calm flying towards this at uh, about 60, 70 miles per hour. 
330 meters per second. So this is where the other guy started. We're now as close as the other guy was when uh, he started his trip. Uh, oh, you see, it's definitely rotating now. I think it picked up some rotation because the other pilot bumped into it. Or it might have simply picked up a bit of rotation because we are rotating around the planet. I don't honestly know, but... Regardless, it is easy to see the hatch, and I shall go straight into it. And we shall have Kerman number two on his way home. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I those administrators are right. The budget cuts have produced a more efficient spacecraft. Having said that, I don't see them bringing much in the way of sample zone. So I guess, yeah, um, before I ditch this, uh, before I go with this guy, I'm just going to ditch the spacecraft uh, into the surface of the moon. And, uh, you know, he has enough he has enough fuel that he should be able to recover. So I'm just setting the periapse down a little, and then he'll jump off and travel back towards the ship. 1.7 kilometers. He's way, way out. Okay, periapse is 300 meters. That would probably definitely crash. Oh, there we go. So it's now negative. Now let's cut off. Hold up. I didn't need to do that, did I? I'm an idiot. Yeah, because that thing is controllable regardless of whether there's a Kerman attached to it or not. Oh, well, 1.9 kilometers. Let's uh, head over there. I'm sure he has plenty of fuel. The other guys have plenty of fuel. Let's um, make it nice and quick because I know I have this flight leaving now in uh, three hours and 40 minutes. And, you know, they don't wait, not even for a space pilot like myself. And I've... I like to think they're a little more professional than myself at flying planes. They also have better autopilots and in-flight snacks. Um, they'll also have beer, which is good, although it will be an overnighter. Uh, 1.8 kilometers. Just, I think, I think I need to speed this up a little. Jeez, 1.7. So 1.6 kilometers is about a mile for those people that uh, speak. Um, not metric. Yeah, also, um, you know, tomorrow the uh, Mars Curiosity rover is touching down. Um, I really wanted to make a thing about that in Kerbal Space Program, but, you know, time's pressures are too much. <laughs> Suffice to say, those guys truly are Kerbal in every way, and I wish them great success. I really cannot wait to see this, whether this thing works or not. I, I mean, if it works, it'll be great because of, the, you know, just because of the giant experimental landing system. But more important, it's going to do some awesome science. You know, science is good. We want more science. 600 meters, we're coming in really nice and fast here. We must be going like 100 miles an hour towards this thing. Just got to make sure I slow down before I get there. I don't want to fly past. That would be really embarrassing. Um, you know, there's not much that would be more embarrassing than flying past it. I mean, unless... Oh, shit! I'm going to crash into... Yeah, I did say you'd have to be a complete idiot to crash into it. Okay, well, two out of three Kermans returned. That's uh, not the worst survival statistics of these missions. But um, <laughs> I hope I can improve on them by the time we get some planets for version 1.7. I already have my Mars ship figured out. But I have a flight to catch, so I will say my goodbyes, and I hope you tell me to fly safe. <laughs>